Imagine you're a ghost haunting villagers and fighting demons for 100 days. On day one, I spawned in a graveyard as a ghost. Whoa, this place is creepy and I only have six hearts. As I was taking in my surroundings, I noticed that I still had a hunger bar. Do ghosts need to eat? I wonder. Ow, 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 ow. Uh, note to self, you can't walk through solid objects. It was getting late in the graveyard, and while wandering around, I found some skeletons. I should go say hi. Hey there, fellas. How's it go? Ah! Okay, okay, not friendly. Got it, got it. As I ran away, I could feel myself lifting higher and higher off the ground. <gasps> I can fly! Soaring high into the night sky, I noticed some zombies in a different section of the graveyard. Maybe they'll be nicer. Oh, how wrong I was. As soon as I touched back down to the ground, the zombies came charging towards me. Man, there is just no winning here. On day two, I began chopping down trees so I could make a wooden pickaxe. Cool, now I can mine some stone. I explored a cave and gathered stone to create some tools such as a sword and an axe. Now it's payback time. While waiting for the sun to go down, I picked up some wild berries. Nom, 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 nom. The sun set and it was time to rematch the skeletons. Not so tough when I have a weapon, are you now? The skeletons were in fact still tough. Even with my stone sword, their arrows pierced me even though I was a ghost. So I ate the berries to heal up. <sighs> These are all right, but at least I filled up my hearts. I decided to find some monsters that I can kill. So I went and battled the zombies. Revenge is a dish best served dead. I was able to take out every single zombie without any issue. Victory screech! <laughs> It was day three, and I decided to make a little house. I'm gonna need more wood if I wanna make anything. I swung at the trees for hours and collected a fair amount of wood, all in a day's work. I better get to it then. I began building my home. By the end of it, I had a small little house, but one day, it will be an entire haunted mansion. Not bad, not bad at all. I need a consistent stream of food, so I started a little farm close by. I'll have to get some crops now. Oh, I have an idea. It was time to do some classic ghost stuff, such as haunting some villagers. Psst. Huh? Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Pranking the villagers was hilarious, but I came here for crops. I'll be taking these, don't mind if I do. I managed to gather a few crops before I was seen by the Iron Golem. He wasn't happy with me stealing the crops. Ouch! Dang you, Pack-a-Punch! I wasn't willing to risk my life, so I took what I could and flew away. From days four to five, I planted the crops that I took from the village. After a bit of waiting around, we had carrots. Well, here goes nothing. I ate a few carrots and then I suddenly grew into a full-sized ghost. Whoa, 10 hearts. With my newly gained hearts, I felt a lot more confident heading out and exploring the world. Maybe I'll even find some new materials. During my wandering, I came across a collection of these strange black brick blocks. I mined them to see what they were. This is so weird. What are these blocks here for? While I was scrutinizing the black brick blocks, a strange looking Alley floated past me. Oh, hey there, bud. The withered Alley was not feeling very friendly as he spit a strange black glob at me. Ah! Wither, wither. I faced off against the little guy, but between the wither effect limiting my health and his flight, he was really hard to hit. It was then that I saw a little creature with big eyes approach. Wait, he's taking the aggro. With my new friend's help, we were able to slay the Alley. Hey friend, thanks for helping me out there. I asked the little shadow golem if he had a name. Hmm, I know, I'll call you Danny. From days six through eight, I extended the base to make some room for Danny. This should be more than enough room. I was curious about where Danny came from, so I asked him a few questions. Hey Danny, where did you come from? Like you mean a void of some sort? Danny stared into my soul with his dead eyes, and that was enough for me to drop the conversation. No, thank you. Way too scary. Uh, I gotta go now. See you later, Danny. I found another cave and went mining for some iron and coal. I should be able to make some good iron tools and armor with this. As I was exploring the cave, I ran into some cave spiders. I tried to fly away, but they crawled after me. Fine, you give me no choice but to fight you. I used my stone sword and exterminated all the creepy crawlers. I better get home before more come 
come out. As soon as I returned, I smelted the iron and made some iron tools like iron pickaxe and a sword. Plus, I made an entire armor set out of the iron. I then also made some shears. I could use these shears to gather wool. All I'm missing are some sheep. I rounded up some nearby sheep and got some wool with the shears. I crafted two beds, one for myself and one for Danny. Time for bed. Bitter dreams, Danny. On day nine, I dreamt I was in the void. Hello? Where am I? Who are you? A giant monster was with me. He was terrifying and menacing. I thought I sensed a disturbance in my realm. What are you doing in my domain? I'm not sure how I got here. Is this the void? It is. I'm the keeper, ruler of the void. Soon everything will succumb to the void. The world will become pure darkness. Why would you do this? Seriously? You're asking me why? Um, yeah? <sighs> For power, you dumbo! Don't you know every villain wants power? Now get out of my land! I woke up in a heartbeat, knowing exactly what I had to do. Stop the keeper at all cost. From days 10 through 12, I begged Danny to take me to the void, but he refused. Come on, Danny, at least tell me where it is. <laughs> what? You want me to figure it out for myself? <laughs> Fine. Since Danny was no help, I decided to go exploring and look for more void entrances. Here's one. Wait, is that Steve? Ah, oh, sweet. My first ghost encounter. Come to Papa. Somehow, Steve acquired a proton blaster and started blasting straight towards me. What the? Where did you get that thing? Ah, I gotta get out of here. No. Ah, uh, I almost had him. We could have been friends. Luckily, I got away and continued looking for void entrances to see if I could find more clues. Oh, here's another one. Nothing I saw seemed to help me understand more about the void, so I decided to head back home and try later. On days 13 through 16, I went to a nearby beach and collected some sand that I could turn into glass for my project. I'm gonna make a ghost statue and it's going to be very creepy. I need to collect as much sand as possible to build this. I began turning the sand I collected into glass and then I dyed the glass white and gray Oh nice, these are the perfect shades. I had all my materials ready and it was now time to build the statue, starting with the legs first. I tried to match my pixel colors as closely as possible. Wow, these legs look great. Can't wait to finish it. Danny admired my statue making skills and told me how impressed he was with my hard work. Glad you like it, Danny. And it's good to hear more than one word come out of your mouth. If you even have a mouth. As Danny and I kept talking, creepers showed up at my base. Oh no, creepers are approaching. Danny and I made sure to keep the creepers away from our house because quite a few of them exploded. But after fighting a few creepers and letting the rest blow up, Danny and I added torches around the base to ward off any enemies. From days 17 through 20, I dedicated all all my time to learning more about the void. I gotta get to the bottom of this. I began exploring caves, trying to get as far down as possible. I wonder how low I can go. Surely there must be an end. As I got closer to the bottom, the cave stones began to be covered by skulk. What the heck is this stuff? This place has a horrible stench. I knew the warden must be near and I had to explain myself to him before he would think of me as a foe. Who goes there? Leave now or face the consequences. Wait, I'm not an enemy. I'm a friendly ghost looking for answers. No one counts to a warden for answers, only death. What could you possibly want from me? I'm looking for answers about the void. Do you know anything about it? What would I know about it? You do know that I'm blind, right? However, there is one thing. I sense a bit of the void has found its way down here. That's a start. Can you please take me to it? <sighs> Fine. The warden took me deeper into the cave until we reached another void entrance. Well, this is it. I looked around, but there was still no answers about how the void got here in the first place. Well, thanks for the help anyways. Would you be willing to help me on my journey? Only if it were a dire situation. Fair enough. Thanks for your time. On days 21 through 23, I headed back home and continued working on the base. If I tear down this wall, I can make another room behind it. I started building another room that I could use as a dining area. I was also getting really creative with the space I was building. Ooh, I'm gonna need a basement. Gotta have my ghost cave. I wanted to add some creepy decorations to my home. So I went to the caves and found a mine shaft and brought my shears with me so I could gather up some cobwebs. Gotta add some final touches. Oh no, zombie villagers, and they're everywhere. I felt bad. I had to kill all these villagers.
villagers that were now zombified, but one of them dropped something really cool. Whoa, what's this? An obsidian skull? It stops fire damage. That's awesome. I tested it out by walking into some lava and it worked like a charm. Nice! Now I won't be affected by any fire attacks. I then headed back home and placed some cobwebs around the basement. On days 24 through 28, I was visited by an unwanted guest. It was an ugly green ghost, and it was wrecking havoc on my base. Ugh! It's Slimer! Suddenly, Steve pulled up in the Ecto-1. Oh man, this day keeps getting better. A two-for-one special. Hey, if I help you catch this ghost, will you let me go free? Oh, heck yeah, bro. Steve agreed, and I flew around and distracted Slimer, while Steve used his proton blaster to capture him. Got it. My first ghost capture. Thanks, Casper. Uh, my name's actually- Eh, never mind. You're welcome. You know, most ghosts aren't as nice as you, so naturally it's my duty to bust them. That's cool, Steve. I'm glad you got a B-plot in this episode. All about busting ghosts. Oh, and if you see any terror dogs roaming around, you know who to call. You never gave me your number. Actually, I don't even have a phone. I'm sure I'll see him again soon. Oh, wait. Now I have to clean this all up by myself. Danny! On days 29 through 33, I continued exploring some more. I ended up finding a village that looked abandoned. Hello? Is anyone here? I caught a glimpse of someone walking into a building. They were wearing some kind of mask. I better be cautious here before checking it out. When I walked into the building, it was nothing but a restaurant filled with all sorts of creepy looking people. It was like a home for unwanted folk. Does that guy have a knife in his hands? And is that a moving toy doll? Hiya, Bronzo. Hi there, Mr. Clown. Are you friendly? Only if you want to play. Everyone seemed really happy to see me, especially the little creepy doll kid and this guy with a ghost face. Hi, my name's Chucky. I'm a killer doll. Wanna play? Um, I'm fine. Thanks. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, why don't you stay for a while? You fit right in with us. Why not? You guys seem like great friends already. On days 34 through 37, all the misfit villains started teaching me some new special skills. Michael Myers came up to me with a knife, but showed me how to use it. Oh, this is sharp. Frankenstein taught me how to scare people with loud groans. Oh, let me try. The creature from the Black Lagoon then offered to teach me how to swim. This is fun. I love swimming. After a little swimming lesson, Krampus offered to teach me something. I will teach you how to kidnap villagers. No, I'm okay. Thanks, though. It can come in handy sometimes. It's fun, too, you see. Krampus, I'm sorry, but that doesn't sound very fun. The villains all taught me very interesting skills and even offered to help me in my battle against the Void. We will help you fight the Void. I can kidnap them and lock them in my dungeon. Oh, thanks, Krampus. But the Void's not a person. It's actually a place. But anyway, thanks, everyone. But I won't be needing your help. I can make the Keeper float. We can all float together. How kind of you all. Seriously. Oh. Oh, but look at the time. I must get going. Although they all had really neat skills, I was honestly creeped out. So I quickly left and flew back home as fast as possible. As soon as I arrived back home, I shared some stories about my trip with Danny. So they were all really weird. And now I'm exhausted. What a haunting experience. And that's coming from a ghost. On days 38 through 40, the keeper came to the base and unleashed void mobs. Well, hello, little ghost. It seems like you're at the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm not scared of you or your stupid powers. How'd you even get to the overworld anyway? It doesn't matter how. Go on, Voidlings. Destroy him. The Keeper vanished, so I brought out my weapon and started to attack. Danny, keep fighting. Kill them all. Together, Danny and I had some crazy skills. We killed all the Voidlings, but noticed something was left behind. A shadow axe. The Keeper must have left it, and now it's mine. After that experience, I needed to relax and just focus focus on building, so I started making the base look even more creepy. After that, I wanted to try out my new shadow axe, so I used it on some mobs. This thing does so much damage! After using the shadow axe, I headed back home to plan out my next move. Or 
or to continue distracting myself. On days 41 through 43, I decided to work on the statue and it was coming along great. This looks awesome so far. After that, I continued tending to my crops. I expanded the farm to make room for more and planted as many as I could. Yeehaw! I'm a farmer ghost. While I was farming, I had a brilliant idea to build a giant garden maze. That would be super spooky. So I ran off into the woods to collect a bunch of leaves. While I was running through the forest, I heard some frightening noises up ahead. Who goes there? It was a pack of bears and they ambushed me. Oh no, not bears. I flew up to the top of the trees to dodge their attacks and then happened across a little baby bear that was stuck up there. Aw, sure. But you gotta promise not to attack me once you're down. I helped the baby bear down from the tree and the bears were super grateful. The bears went on their way through the forest and I continued cheering tons of leaves for my maze project. On days 44 through 49, I was traveling through the forest when I came across these two sinister looking statues. I better call Steve. It was just then that it hit me. How am I supposed to contact him anyway? Eh, never mind. On my way back to the base, I was in a wide open field in the dead of night. Just then, a strange blue ghost ran towards me. Ah, what the heck? Hey, watch where you're going. The nerve of some people. Then I saw who the ghost was running from. A mustached fellow with a green hat, overalls, and a vacuum cleaner strapped to his back. Luigi? Oh no, another ghost. Luigi flashed me with a bright light for some reason. Hey, uh, what are you doing there, bud? The flashlight didn't work. The flashlight then turned into a vacuum and he pointed it directly at me. Uh... But nothing happened. He just stared at me with his vacuum cleaner. He tried to use it to suck me into the machine, but it didn't really work. I guess I'm just not that type of ghost. You done there, Luigi? His legs began to quiver until he just ran away. Mario! Well, um, that was a waste of time. On days 50 through 53, I got back to my base and began working on the garden maze. This is going to be amazing. Get it? I started out by clearing the surrounding area and then flattening it all to be level. Wow, I'm amazed how flat this is. Huh? Huh? After that, I started designing the maze. I worked from my house backwards and added tons of twists and turns. This fills me with amazement. <laughs> Okay, okay. But you like the maze though, right? Uh, well, get good. While Danny and I were bickering, I heard Steve in the maze. Help! Somebody get me out of here! I flew into the maze and found him wandering around. Hey there, Steve. Oh, I found those terror dogs you were looking for in the woods near here. Oh, tubular. But, um, could you help me out of here? Nah, I'm sort of busy these days. Lots of things to deal with. Building mazes, sleeping, dealing with the keeper in the overworld. Lots of fun stuff. Anyways, good luck. Wait, no, don't leave me. I flew out of the maze and headed towards the forest, beginning to search for where the keeper may be. From days 54 to 58, I spotted a ghost pirate ship. Whoa, I wonder what treasures are on this vessel. I instantly became friends with some of the crew members. Arg, you okay, boyo? Have some food, you look as thin as a ghost. Thanks a lot, friend. I was actually pretty hungry. The moon rose and boy was I wrong. All the crew members on the pirate ship turned into skeletons. Wait, 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 we can settle this in a friendly manner. The skeletons didn't want to do any talking and they took me hostage. Oh, really, man? I thought we were starting to become good friends here. The pirates locked me in the brig and told me my fate was to be handed over to the keeper. Why would you do that? Cause the keeper be giving us lots of treasure for ye. Fair enough. After some time, the pirate watching over me had fallen asleep. Get your grubby hands off me. I'll take this. What the? Hey, that's mine. See ya. I stole the pirate's phantasmic blade, but I didn't have time to really test it out. I finally escaped the ship and wanted to try out my new weapon on some mobs. And what better target than some skeletons? Awesome. I can shoot out ghost swords at my enemies. This is great for keeping my distance. Take this, you stinky skeletons. After that, I was exhausted and it was time to go back home. On days 59 through 62, I returned home to find out that Danny had duplicated himself. Hey, Danny. I mean, Danny's? 
Whoa, there are two of you. I wasn't sure how to feel about having two Dannys, but maybe it could be helpful. That's crazy. How'd you do it? Oh, well, now that there's two of you, we can help each other build the statue. The Dannys and I started working on the statue together. We are working faster now that there are three of us. We made the arms of the statue and we were almost done with our creation. Nice job, Dannys. Now let's take a little break. After working on the statue all day, I decided to take my little army in search of some tools. We're gonna need some diamond tools to fight the keeper. Let's go mining. The Danius and I went mining for diamonds and I made a diamond sword, axe, and pickaxe. I loved the little army we had going on and now it was time to go find the keeper. All right guys, we put in some good work today. Now let's go find that jerk. For days 63 to 66, I ran into one of the keeper's minions. He was a very large man with a giant axe. Oh no, what the heck is that thing? Guys, prepare to attack. We began to fight with each other. He kicked one of the Dannys really hard. Oh man, I'm gonna need my strongest weapon to fight him. I brought out my phantasmal blade and charged at him. Danny! The giant used his powerful axe on one of the Dannys and killed him. No! How dare you take one of my Dannys? You're gonna die for that! I jumped with anger and struck him down. Now that he was dead, all I could think about was Danny. I ran to the surviving Danny, who was mourning his compadre's death. I'm sorry I couldn't save him, but thank you for helping me win this fight. Then the thought of not knowing which Danny was which came into my head. Wait, uh, what Danny are you though? He then disappeared. Wait, where'd he go? Am I going crazy? Then suddenly, he reappeared. Huh? You guys tricked me. Um, okay, I guess. Glad you're not dead, Danny. Or at least this version of you. The whole thing was really confusing, so I just kept moving along. From day 67 through 70, I stumbled upon a massive graveyard. Maybe I can find some answers here. As I was making my way through the graveyard, I noticed someone trying to dig up the caskets for some loot. Hey, let those people rest in peace. Am I seeing things or is that a ghost? Either way, eat lead, you freak of nature. The grave robber fired bullets at me, but since I was a ghost, they just went straight through me. Boo! Really, you're that scared? Anyway, I better keep looking for answers. I stumbled across a restless ghost who popped out of his grave. Excuse me, would you happen to know anything about the void? He <laughs> he was number one. Who was number one? Smitty, he knows the answers. Where can I find this smitty you speak of? Where the gold grave rises, where the mighty have fallen. You mean the grave right there? All right. Smitty's grave was glorious and built of golden blocks. Smitty Warbin Jagerman Jensen? He was number one. All this gold reminds me of when I was a golden dragon for 100 days. You should totally check that video out after you've watched this one. Suddenly, Smitty stepped out of his tomb. He seemed disturbed. Not cool, dude. Why'd you wake me up? Uh, sorry about that. I'm looking for answers about the void. The void? Hmm, sounds familiar. I need more details, Prosif. Well, there's this evil guy. He calls himself the Keeper. Oh, you mean Clarence? He calls himself the Keeper now, haha. <laughs> I see. Well, I hate to take up any more of your time, but do you know how I can kill him? The only way to kill him is with light and lots of it. Oh, and fire works too. Thanks a lot, Smitty. I'll avenge you. I then left the graveyard with a mission to find something with fire powers. Between days 71 and 74, I found Steve and he looked to be in danger. The terror dogs came out on full attack mode. We have no choice but to fight, Steve. Use all your skills if you have any. Steve and I fought tooth and nail against the terror dogs, but they were a worthy opponent. Eventually, we were able Able to defeat the terror dogs and claim victory we did it i wouldn't celebrate so early there's something bigger lurking in the woods well okay if you need help look for the warden tell him bronzo sent you thanks casper 
Catch you later, crocodile. Somehow, he managed to get that entire sentence wrong. On days 75 through 78, I had to figure out how to acquire a flamethrower. But then, I had a great idea. Maybe the Blaze could help me. They know a lot about fire. I better get some obsidian. I went mining, looking for all the obsidian I could get my hands on. This should be enough for another portal. Along the way, I also found a bunch of diamonds. I used them to craft a diamond chest plate and helmet. This should protect me well. I made the nether portal and hope I make it back alive. Hey, I made it to the other side. And luckily, my portal was next to a fortress. Suddenly, I was attacked by wither skeletons. They wanted me out of the nether. No thanks, I'm flying out of here. See you later, ground dwellers. After some time, I finally found some blaze and they started attacking me. I come in peace. I need your help. but I'm looking for some fire powers. I want to replicate yours. Deal, you have my word. The Blaze and I then went in search for the Mutant Blaze. For days 79 to 84, I was able to find the Mutant Blaze and we started a fight. He was super powerful. He could shoot fireballs, move super fast and charge at me and could spin me around like a tornado. But thankfully I had fire resistance for my obsidian skull. Nice try you stupid Blaze. I used my Phantasm Blade to get some aerial shots on the Blaze and finish him off. Yes, go Bronzo! After killing the mutant Blaze, I went and spoke to the normal Blaze to tell them the good news. We killed the mutant. Can you guys give me fire powers now? The Blazes admitted that they couldn't give me fire powers after all. Wow, that's a bummer. However, they could give me a flamethrower. Oh, whoa, this is awesome. Thank you. With the flamethrower in tow, I said my goodbye to the Blaze and made my way out of the nether. For the days of 85 to 89, it was Halloween time. So Danny and I decided to take a break from our mission. We traveled through a bunch of villages and did some trick or treating, scaring some of the villagers along the way. Eventually, we spotted a big house nearby and decided to stop by. Ooh, look at that big house over there. They'll probably give out a lot of candy. When we got to the house, the keeper stepped out. Oh no, it's the keeper. The keeper saw me and quickly spawned his minions. Ah, perfect timing. No, my little minions, attack! I pulled out my flamethrower and began to shoot, but the keeper got away. I'm gonna get you, keeper! I killed all his minions with the flamethrower and with my phantasm blade, but at the end, I looked around to see where the keeper could be. Where did he go? This could have been the perfect time to kill the keeper, but we needed to focus and continue looking for him. For the days of 90 through 93, we had finally finished the statue. After so much time of working on it, it was the most interesting statue I had ever seen because it was all see-through thanks to the glass. Wow, this looks incredible. Danny stared at the statue in awe, and then he shared how impressed he was. I agree. Hey, how's your statue going, Danny? Danny jumped with excitement when I asked him about his statue and then took me to see it. We walked a bit to get there, and there it was, Danny's statue made of wool. Oh, wow. Good job, Danny. I see what you did there with the wool. Nice. It looks just like you. Although it was made of just a few blocks of wool, it was still well made, and I was proud of his creation. No, it actually looks quite spooky. I love it. After admiring his statue for some time, I decided I needed to go mining for more diamonds. All right, Danny, I need to finish building my armor set. Let's go get some diamonds. We found a couple of diamonds, and with that, I was able to finish building my armor set. This armor set is built to fight anyone. Now I'm unstoppable. As I was exploring the caves, I went deeper and deeper, and finally met up with the warden again. What brings you here, Bronzo? I need some answers. First, do you know where Steve could be? Well, it's not looking too good. The warden told me Steve had gone mad and that he went to go fight the giant beast by himself. Steve has left and decided to take this battle all on his own. Oh no, this is really bad. I need to go find him before he gets killed. After talking with the warden, I set on a journey to go find Steve. He was not going to fight this beast without me. Days 94 through 96 were upon me, and I had to help Steve fight the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. 
Steve, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind for fighting this thing? I could do this on my own. I don't need the help of a ghost. I ignored Steve and used my flamethrower to deal damage to the Marshmallow Man. Fire versus Marshmallow. This totally makes sense. The Marshmallow Man was tough and wasn't going down without a fight. He was large, slow, hit hard, and was using my fire against me. He's launching the fire back at me. Ugh, why don't you just drop dead already, you big fluffy beast? Suddenly, the worst possible outcome happened. Steve was killed by the big marshmallow. No! Steve! You'll pay for this! I thought I had lost Steve forever, but then a miracle happened. Whoa, I'm a ghost. This is awesome. Time for some payback. Steve, I thought I lost you. Let's finish this once and for all. We defeated the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man together with the power of friendship. We did it, Steve. We did it. After the battle, Steve mentioned that if I ever needed his help in fighting the Keeper, I have his number. Um, well, I don't really have a cell phone, but I'll figure it out. Thanks, Steve. Bye. On days 97 and 98, I returned home to do some final preparations for my battle against the Keeper. I need to have everything in order before I go into battle. But first, let's have a snack. All this fighting made me hungry. I walked outside my home and found an apple to snack on. But then, I started to hear Danny from far away. <laughs> Danny, where are you? I flew over the maze looking for Danny, and I found him there lost. What is it? Way to go, Danny. That's great. Where? Are you serious? What do you want? I knew the only way to find the keeper was to help Danny with his wish, so I had to do it. All right, Danny, as you wish. Hmm. Oh, now I gotta find some pixie dust. That'll help you fly. I went looking for a pixie village. There, I should find some pixie dust. Ooh, there it is. And look, lots of pixies. I better lay low so none of them spot me. I got all the way up to the top of their base without getting noticed and finally found a chest filled with pixie dust. I started to steal from it and took as much as I could, but one of them spotted me. I managed to escape the pixie and bring some pixie dust with me. And when I got home, I gave it to Danny. Ugh, that was a close one. Here, Danny, I brought you the pixie dust. Danny started to float for a little bit and he looked so happy, but I needed him to tell me where the keeper's base was. Okay, Danny, I completed your wish. Now tell me what I need to know. Danny told me where the base was and said he knew where it was since the beginning. Really, Danny? <laughs> yeah, whatever, let's get going. On day 99, as I was heading towards the keeper, I stopped by the graveyard from earlier. I had an important message for everyone to hear. Ahem! Excuse me, sorry to disturb all of you. I would just like to tell everyone watching to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss another video. Also, comment what kind of mob you want to see me be for my next 100 days video. We don't even have access to the internet. Well, I'm off to slay the keeper. Wish me luck. I continued on my mission and headed to the keeper's base. It was grand and surrounded by the void. This isn't good. The void is spreading quickly. I better do something about it. Here goes nothing. Day 100 had arrived and I confronted the keeper directly. So, you finally manned up. I've been waiting for you. Return to the void now and leave this planet alone. Never! I'm going to fortify this entire galaxy! I had enough and charged at the Keeper. I used my sword and flamethrower to deal lots of damage to him. Ah, it burns. Getting a lot hotter in here, huh? You'll eat your words. Get him, minions! The Keeper spawned in parasites and eventually used his blinding powers on me. It seemed like he was getting the best of me. I didn't think I was gonna win until backup arrived. Warden, glad you made it. The Warden went toe to toe with the Keeper and got a few good hits in, weakening him, but it wasn't enough. You're done for. The Keeper killed the Warden, but now it was my chance to finish this fight once and for all. Say nighty night, Keeper. Hey-ya! <laughs> Yeah, I win! <laughs>